Yummy. 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 Both arms. Thank you. Okay then. Okay. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is the razor that leads the soul to bleed. Some say love, it is a hunger. start of the next bird, which is so important. It's so important because it's about the dark. If anybody remembers the line of the next verse. Otherwise, then it's about the valleys and the hills and the mountains, the forests. tumultuous ocean that can be as tender as a little baby's touch. And when the night has been too lonely, you think the road is too long. In the winter, Oh, oh my. Far beneath the snow, I know this song better than any song I've ever known. It's how I met my husband. We sang to one another. And he died three years ago, and he wouldn't have hospice. He refused to have hospice. <laughs> He didn't want any strangers into our home. I accepted that, I could have forced it. I was his hospice and friends, two of whom are sitting there. And I've known for, oh, eternities that I was gonna do the hospice training someday while I was still alive. But I didn't know if I could do it now. I didn't know if I had the energy. So I took my husband's advice, who had me take no thank you bites to life, to food, to all sorts of things because I'm so resistant about so much. So the first two sessions were no thank you bites. And it meant that I wasn't to be judged by myself or anybody else if I didn't stay the course. Well, why the, I, Rose, don't worry, I won't say it. <laughs> why the effort would I not have stayed? You group of people, I came in because I knew I had wonderful skills, but I knew they needed to be honed and refined. What I didn't know is who you guys were <laughs> and the communion that made all the difference and reminds me again, communion, communion and service, service, Service not being fixing, <laughs> there is helping, but serving. The month before my husband died, he asked if we could have a therapy session with the therapist who was a good friend of ours and had saved our marriage. And we sat there, he knew he was dying, but he knew 
Parkinson's and heart attacks and strokes. He was still amazingly cognizant. And he said to the, he said to our friend Milton and to me, he said, Lorinda is not listening to me. I'm the one dying. <laughs> <laughs> and she thinks she's in charge. <laughs> and Milton, could you help her to get that she needs to step back? <laughs> And that was two hours of that version. The humility, the humility of being with you all, with having had the gift of being with my husband and his being such an amazing teacher, and then coming and being with you all in this way. That if, if, if you guys who aren't, haven't been here and you're friends of somebody who is here, truly, couldn't, there's no amount of money I could pay, and I've been in tons of groups in my life, no amount of money I could pay for what you all, and Nina, you as the source, holding the container for all of our anxieties and fears and sadnesses and despair, and childlike humor. A lot of childlike humor in our group. I don't know what other groups are like. But we had not childish. We were not childish, right, guys? No. We were childlike. So you, we, that was that is exquisite, right? Humor, child humor to be there with them. Wordlessly wonderful to have made it all the way. This is a, I graduated from high school and college, but I've got to say, for me, this is the most conscious, true graduation I've ever had, and I thank you all. Thank you.